what? Heck what? <laughs> <laughs> you know it's our friend. <laughs> I can see you. Okay, so are we live? Do we know if we can I will, I will definitely be able to tell you that you're live in three, isn't this right, Michelle? Three, two, one. I think that we are live. We either were or now we definitely are. <laughs> okay, cool. Mine <laughs> says live on the top right. So That's perfect. Cool. And I can't see Amber, but I think when Amber's talking, it'll pop back on. So, or maybe when you're not on keys, because you're actually it's... both showing on the Facebook oh. live. You are good. Sweet. Okay, cool. Well, I just love Amber's juiciness. So I'm like, where'd Amber go? Where is my Amber love? <laughs> oh, perfect. There she is. There's there I am. Okay, so guys, we'll dive in. Thanks for uh, waiting for our technicalities. And we, we definitely have an amazing team of support. And uh, like I said, I don't know how long we actually were live that we're working all that out. So if you guys got a, a, a fun little show, then I'm glad you got to enjoy. I'm actually in Hawaii right now. I leave for India tomorrow for a deep dive pilgrimage for like four to six weeks going all through the Himalayas and sacred sites. And so the Amber's in San Diego. So we're like, this was something that we really wanted to come together and chat about. Um, I mean, if, you, if you've if you seen bits and pieces of Amber, you're just like, the juiciness is just like, rah, like melting <laughs> off. So I know that everyone's like, oh, this, this woman, the same experience I had with her. And so we have about, we have a little bit of a window to be able to chat about some things that we feel like are really important and we just get to shine some light on and have some truth on. And so um, kind of while we're letting people jump on a little bit, I just, Amber, should we share how we actually met? Should we share a little bit of that? Yeah, let's share. You start. Like the divine, the, you know, the universe just divinely always brings everything to us so effortlessly. That's what I love. Mm. So um, I had had Amber's name dropped to me several times and I, I operate in a place that's like, yeah, just ease and flow. When everything show up, they show up. And as I moved to my, my last place, the Magical Manifestation Mansion, before I started my global citizen journey, um, I went and I, I went to a new gym. And there was this woman at the gym that was just captivating. Like every time I, I just walked in, I just saw this woman. And she was so like, she just was not the normal gym goer. She was always barefoot, doing her <laughs> own thing. She was always doing, and she was sexy like no other, like, I was just like, damn, <laughs> that woman is so just like, I was captivated by her, by her essence and her frequency, her vibration coming from across the room. I remember thinking, wow, that woman has some codes. Like that woman is like, I can tell her vibration and her frequency is like unique. And we just, I always would, when I'd be there, I'd just be like, I'd find myself in these moments of just, um, you know, like honoring and appreciating this divine beauty. And then there's times I'm working out and I look up and she was checking me out. And I was like, yeah, she's, I, yeah, she's totally checking me out too. <laughs> and so we had this whole like love affair. And yet we were always far enough across the gym or there's like machines and people in between. It was just, there was never that interaction. And then I left for my global citizen journey and got rid of the house, all identities, everything. And I'm, I, I see someone posted something with this beautiful woman and her name was the exact name that's been dropped to me, Amber Hartnell. And it's this gorgeous woman. I was like, what the, that is the woman from the gym. Oh my gosh, that's that gorgeous woman. Well, Amber apparently had somewhat of the same experience mm -hmm. just with name dropping and checking me out and then seeing the po a post with me and whatnot. And so um, it came down to when I was going to be coming back to San Diego for a month for my last event that I actually had scheduled on my my schedule and my assistant always sets everything up and something said, no, you request to drop it in San Diego conscious community. So I ended up just dropping in there and being like, Hey guys, I'm coming back for a month. I'm looking for a place that's sacred energy, beautiful space to, to be able to, to, to stay. And I'll let you take it from there. Mm -hmm. I'm not often <laughs> on social media, Facebook and yeah. Marcy. And there was something that compelled me to respond to it. And I'm one who really preserves my space closely just due to the nature of the work that I do and the, the highly coherent field that I must maintain in order to do my work. And so I was surprised, honestly, by the impulse to reach out to her and explore the conversation about her potentially staying in my little casita that's here adjacent to the house. And we entered into first a, a messaging conversation and right away it's like, oh, wow, we recognize there's something <laughs> here. I, I see now why how to reach out to you mm. and then after a, a phone conversation we just immediately fell in love and realized we speak the same language we're coming from yes. such a 
similar place and that, you know, she lives as similarly as I do and requiring that sanctuary sacred space as well mm. to her deeper work. So mm-hmm. we realized that we're a match made in heaven and yeah. that we're just being brought together in the same physical space because there's so much that actually wants to come through us and our synergy. And of course, it was far beyond anything either one of oh. us imagined as life is surprisingly mm-hmm. lighting us on every turn with the miracles and magic that follows when we follow that impulse of inspiration and don't hesitate yeah. second guess it yeah divine feminine embodiment that's what we're here to do is like the way that we are truly meant to live is just trust and allow the moment by mo- the unfolding and the unfolding mm-hmm. is always so much grander and more beautiful and greater than if we ever tried to control or plan it out so it's like, if I had just done the normal thing and let my assistant plan something out, we would have never interacted. And yet what came about, as Amber said, was, you know, not only did I get to rent out her beautiful guest house on this gorgeous temple sanctuary, this beautiful grand estate and land and be in the temple grounds. And yet she and I, and then I really was like, wow, like finding out and understanding her gifts and what she did, I was called to do medicine ceremony with her and getting to go through that was like one of the greatest transformational experiences. And I've done 20 plus years of deep dive internal work. I've done medicine all over the world. Um, It's a big part of what I feel called to share with people. But as we both know, it's a huge, it's a huge awakening, enlightenment, and a remembrance of who we are. And so to get to do that with her, just like, oh my gosh, it's like opened up levels and levels and levels, her divine gifts. And um, really receiving a whole new level of codes. Like since I've been with Amber, my sensuality codes are like through the roof. Like everything is orgasmic. Like breath is orgasmic. Like just looking at the trees is orgasmic. Like every, everything is so juicy and so sensual. It's like I, I, I unleashed and let, and, and went to the depths of, and I, I always say like the depths we're willing to go. Like if you look at you know, a cave that you've been avoiding, that dark cave that you're so afraid to go into, your darkest cave that you've been avoiding, when you walk in, obviously, and then you move through and the other side is light, that cave, the darkest cave that you're avoiding actually holds your greatest freedom, your greatest light. So it's like the more you're willing to actually allow the the, the depths of what you would feel as your fear or the, the, the things that scare you is how how high then you're willing to receive or how much and how open and how expansive your heart gets to be for how much you're able to receive in joy and pleasure. And so it's like, even the depths that we went to, the, the, the temple grounds, I got to say, guys, there's something so unique. I mean, this being is, is I'll let her share a little bit about her journey with medicine and her gifts, like starting from the age of really seven being woken up. And her gifts, it's like the, the energy of this space, right when you walk in and get there, it's like, you feel a frequency of wholeness or remembrance or home. It's like, as we receive information and context and codes, we go, oh, that feels so true in my body, even though my human brain or my brain has taught me something different, actually I'm remembering something. And it's like this feeling of returning to wholeness. Mm -hmm. And you, Amber, say that your, your intention is everyone that walks in those temple doors is that they, they experience wholeness. They return to wholeness. They return to themselves. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is so coded in this space. So I just had the honor of, I mean, not only getting to live there for a month, but her and I getting to dance and play through ceremony and like doing medicine and gritting and really activating the space. Even, even that the the codes of the the music that we use, I, I boxed her when I was in Oh, somewhere else. Where was I? I was somewhere else and I used the, 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 the music and I boxed and I was like, oh my God, girl, this music is now coded with the space because I went right into my body, literally joyfully getting giddy and, and having some of the same physical external behaviors that came out only when I was in the depths of that kind of medicine. So, you know, that's just to kind of give you guys an idea of like the divine synchronicity of life from like one tiny little thing can completely allow the pathway for so much to be received. And it's a, it's literally, are we willing to allow, are we willing to listen and willing to get curious and play like as in that divine feminine embodiment and allow and what happened and came about was such an evolution that, I mean, I haven't had anything on my schedule this entire year or for the next year. 
And I was like, connecting to Amber, I was like, sweetie, you gotta like, my, my people, <laughs> my people, you know, require this. This is such a gift. And it came together that we decided next spring, we're going to do, we're going to open up the, the, the temple space to be able to host and take people through this journey of remembrance and medicine and ceremony and, and it being a really safe, sacred space for that. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of like the big picture of how it all, what evolved from it, but I'd love you to share babes. Cause a lot of people don't know that much about you because you haven't necessarily done, she's been like a secret hidden gem. You know, she is this grid worker activator on the planet, like magnifying, creating such great good and doing these sessions with people to open up and, and huge leaders and amazing, you know, amazing divine things. Yet she's kind of been in the background, not necessarily up front, like, so you all can see her because she is so precious. I want to say like her energy is so sacred. It's so gifted. And there can be that, wow, everybody wants you kind of a thing. And so it is very, uh, it's a very sacred thing. And it's a very protected thing that we're creating to be able to have her energy, my energy and, and doing this yet. I, I would love you to maybe share a bit on why medicine, maybe where, what your experience is with medicine or your journey and what, what pitfalls people, I'd love us to kind of go into what pitfalls people are afraid of, like why they don't go into medicine, why they are, they're still like, ah, I don't dare do that. Or, you know, we'll, we'll play with it, but I'd love people to get to know you more. Cause you're, oh my God. Oh my gosh, go girl, go. <laughs> Thank you, honey, just looking up your seeing and appreciation. Thank you. Thank you Aww, so much. I love you. An honor and a pleasure to get to weave with you in this way and to, and to begin to open, to share more broadly and to allow myself to become more visible. That's definitely been an edge for me. I've, yeah. I've been my cloaking. Um, my service has been immense and I've often used the expression that I'm, I'm hidden in plain sight and I've chosen that. <laughs> yeah. Either. And clearly life is asking for something else now. So I'm just of my motivation. And um, so first the first thing I just want to come back to a thread that I want to pull on a little bit and that we can follow it. You know, you were speaking about the, you know, the capacity that we gain by being willing to go to the depths, right? And to feel our way through and that that expands us to be able to reach higher heights. And yeah often said this, that, you know, to me, ecstasy is actually our most inherent nature. Now that it might not seem that way for most people, because we have piled so many layers of conditioning on top of our inherent wholeness, which has remained mm -hmm. intact at the core, regardless of anything we've experienced along the way, the, the traumas, the imprints, the cultural conditioning, the familial lineages, all of that brings a lot of weight to it. And it weighs us yeah. down. And it keeps us from experiencing the lightness of our being that where we are inherently free and ecstatic when we peel everything away. And so to me, ecstasy is really our capacity to, and our willingness to experience the full spectrum of our experience. So, you know, by being willing to traverse into the spaces that we previously would have tended to avoid, right? So wherever it's painful, wherever we're afraid, right? Most people tend to continue to contract away from it. And yet that remains as a, an imprint of bound energy. It was an experience we had that we couldn't fully process in the moment. And so we kind of encapsulated it um, so that we could come back to it at a later time when we were more resourced to actually allow that energy to then release. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a good way to explain it. Back into the system. And so what happens though, is that we form these um, dramatizations of the pain on top of it, the stories about the pain. And then that keeps us in these loops of suffering, right? Where we just keep recreating circumstances that resonate with that original pain. And mm -hmm. most people know why or how to get through it, you know, but so what I found in my experience, it's most effective is if we are willing to actually turn towards, directly towards and begin to approach it with the willingness to be fully present with whatever's there and feel it all the way through because all those spaces want is our full mm -hmm. presence and our breath. It's actually yeah. really simple. I mean, mm. simple doesn't mean easy, but it can become easy once we start to develop a new relationship with it where we train ourselves to turn towards intensity and to move into it knowing that's our greatest source of power. That's where our power has been found and we're there to retrieve it. And so we're willing to feel whatever needs to be felt on the way through. Now, if we're not dancing around it and skirting around and we just go right into it, it can actually move very quickly and it doesn't have to be hard. And so that's mm -hmm. my experience working with 
you know, these medicines of the earth, because I, I really work with the, the natural elements, you know, and in all kinds of different plants and ways and their allies, sacred plant allies that are here to support the loosening of those habituated patterns that keep us, the, the defense structures that keep us from actually penetrating through and feeling in. So it, it softens them enough and expands us enough that we can actually, and brings more energy so we can move in and towards and and it also accelerates the process. So the amount of work that can be done in one day is often paramount to 20 years of therapy. I've often heard this and people have come. Yeah. I've yeah. been working yeah. 20 years on this issue, right? And it's just plagued yeah. me. Never yeah. been able to unlock it. And in one day, and often it's in a period of minutes, you know, at the most hours where the full release happens and they feel the peace on the other side and the, the relief, the immense mm -hmm. relief as well so it does it does accelerate the process of of healing and really all that healing is is just a resolution back to our natural state of wholeness it yeah. that's all it is. so you know those is fragmented aspects that are just like these dangling antennas like help like they're they're keep recreating a circumstance so that we can finally instead of making about what's going on here loop it back in and feel it through so that those fragments can come back and plug back into our wholeness and then mm. from that place then you know, we come to the point where there's this feeling of there's nowhere I'm unwilling to go. And that's yeah. ultimately empowering that when you're not needing to avoid anything, then you're free to be, to fully be authentic moment by moment and feeling resourced and able to truly respond to whatever is arising in our experience, again, without the binding of the fear that keeps us moving away from anything that might be potentially uncomfortable. Mm hmm Ah. Uh that's the most beautiful way that you actually put that. And, and you have such a gift of being able, obviously, because you've worked with the medicine for a long time, which again, guys, we're talking about plant medicine. Mm -hmm. So my, and as, as you said, babe, like um, when I got led to plant medicine, it felt like doing 20 years of the normal processing so many people do. And within, you know, a day, a week that can be done. So, I mean, I really reaffirmed that. And so it's interesting to see, what, where it, we, let's look at a, how sometimes the things that are available for us are right in front of us and they're so available. Like everything we require for our, all of our healing, all of our, like the only core wound that really exists, as you mentioned, is it's like the disconnect from ourselves. It's the, the wound of a separation from our own divine sovereignty. And when we're whole, everything without us, there is like, there's no attachments, there's no expectations, there's no story, there's no, it's like, everything just is this beautiful dance of my experiences that I get to choose and, and interacting with them very differently. But what's interesting to think about in this is that it's like all these things are available, just like everything in front of us that we require is, is, is for our healing is right here. It's not, let me go find it out there. It's actually right here. It's inside us. And it's what's every moment of whatever's showing up in our life is the reflection of what's inside that we get to loop it back to so what i what i want to kind of tap into is even though it's so available like we have all these allies with plants what have we been fed in society for a really long time like drugs shame blame bad wrong um control it's like like all these ways of trying to create stories that block us from utilizing our allies in the light to access like these, you know, access the, the inside, the shift within us mm -hmm. and this remembrance of our DNA. And so I'll just remind everyone how, um, what's happening in your body, your feeling centers are 500,000 times more powerful than any thought. So even when you have, like, you try to convince yourself on the surface stuff, like you're say, for instance, you're like, okay, I know you, I've got these limiting beliefs and these issues and you're using surface self-empowerment. This is why therapy, this is why, you know, it's all perfect experiences, but this is why talking about things this is why just trying to think a different thought or have try and to, to create a different mental construct try to plan or control your life in a way all of this is just a head game that keeps you in like a, a syndicate it keeps you in a, the maya the illusion of what's going on and a thought is is not an inkling as powerful as the vibration one cell in vibration is five hundred thousand times more powerful than a thought so even when we do these, like, I'm going to avoid and I'm going to try to do this with my head, you can see why we stay in a crazy cycle. So what Amber's talking about is everything to open up your body, to open up the, the, the feeling centers, to be able to lean in and allow 
Um, and, and to, so one of my experiences I'll share kind of Amber with, um, with in medicine was how it's like, I, I opened up and expanded into more pleasure and ecstatic bliss than I have ever even knew was possible. I was like, wow, that much, that's what real fucking is. Like, that's what real divine pleasure is. I had no human construct for it because it had never been shown to me. It had never been experienced. There was like, there was no way for me to access this remembrance that I could have such a blissful state of pleasure and ecstasy. And as you said, that's our normal in mm -hmm. our divinity, operating from our place of divinity where we're worthy. Now, so it's, then I had that. And then I went to the depths of like finding the scaredest little parts of the little girl inside me that were like so afraid and, and that were holding on to, like you said, this energy and this fear that I just got to feel and like, oh, softly, gently move through and whoosh, and then now where I'm at, that stuff doesn't come up at all. It's just, you know, <laughs> you see me, <laughs> you're in static bliss. And then, so guys, truly it is like this beautiful gift that we have with these plants and these allies to open up our system and to feel all the things that we've blocked off that you, you if you're thinking about it, you don't know how to get there because mm -hmm. it's not a thinking about it game. It's actually an opening in your vessels and your cells and your DNA and knowing that you have so much DNA within you that is just waiting to be awakened mm -hmm. and remembering and, and having an, I'll put it this way, an internal representation. Since I had the internal representation of that amount of ecstasy and pleasure, I've only continued to go, oh, like, so what my human body had a construct for before doesn't even apply. And I've actually opened up to a greater and greater and greater levels because I allowed that darkness to move through too. So I, I think what I want to, I'm hoping people will hear is that, you know, these things are available. So why are you afraid of utilizing them? Mm -hmm. And this is also why we created this, this experience because I, I mean, with my Ascension Adventure retreats, people for years have been like, you know, how do I go to those? You had to pay guys 15 to 30 grand to go down to the jungles with me. And that meant you had to also pay to go out of the country. You had to take two weeks off, like weird, like, and we dove in. And so I was like with Amber having this such a sacred, beautiful space that is activated for this and is safe for this and us getting to do it in San Diego and not only doing the medicine, but I mean, you and my integration and our breakthrough and all the medicines and all that, I was just like, wow, like how many more people can have access to this that would have maybe found all these other reasons to keep themselves from experiencing it, not mm -hmm. to mention a very safe place that we can hold your hand and hold and embrace you in this energy in this field to be able to walk through this all the integration and it's not just like wham bam it's like allowing the medicine allowing the integration allowing the breakthrough work allowing the the also the how to implement it into your life because you know that's what I'm super passionate about mm -hmm. and we're doing all this for less than what one session would be with you and what even half of a session would be with mm -hmm. me like an hour right mm -hmm. so it's like but yet this is why we felt called so guys we're making we're creating every reason we're, we're moving through or, or allowing and creating a solution for every reason why in the past you might have been scared uh, financially from payment plans and it being next March, it's available for everybody from, you know, being able to hold your hand in, with sacred medicine in a sacred space and with a field of just divine love. We're taking all the fears away from that. But what I'd love maybe you to speak to Amber is what have you seen in your experience with medicine that would maybe assist people or, or in understanding why it's not the scary picture that maybe people paint and what's actually really true and because you've worked with so many people yeah that's an important point so you know, that you know to utilize them in such a way where again it's, it's the specific way that we're working with them as allies right first of all there is a very solid container of absolute safety and truly unconditional mm -hmm. love that is palpably felt that gives the nervous system and the defense structures this feeling of ease where they can tangibly feel we can let go into the space it's safe to actually unravel here and to be mm -hmm. put back together into a truer version of who i truly am so that's one important point and you know and it's also you had mentioned about you know that them helping us to gain access you know and it's really 
that's an important thing to note as well, that it's not about reaching for something or I need this, or I need these, you know, these plant medicines to get in here. It's, it's not about that. You know, it's mm -hmm. actually very infrequent for me, my own experience, because, you know, it's at the, the right medicine at the right moment, it's like a destiny point that just that right key that unlocks that door that opens so much. And then it's up to us to actually step through the door and to truly become that. It's not just mm. to go back into the medicine. And I would never recommend that to anybody, you know, yeah. I don't recommend yes, that. Thank it's you. Very, it's a very sacred offering that again, at the right timing. And, um, and so, I, I mean, I've seen so much in the space. I mean, essentially because of the, the level of safety that's created and the, the nurturance, I mean, you get to feel that, wow, this doesn't have to be hard work. Even though I may be feeling some really difficult things and some painful things, I can feel at the same time, wow, I'm okay. Like I can actually really allow myself to feel this because I'm so well held here to truly let go and keep dropping beneath it to experience something deeper. And so again and again, I mean, it's consistent. My experience is truly homecoming again and again and again. And it's just every time I never know what's going to happen because it's not coming with any brilliant idea. Like, I think I know what I'm doing here, you know, and it's really about opening the space and emptying out so that exactly what needs to happen for your next evolution can occur distorted by ego, you know, or any sense of self-importance or I'm here doing this to you. It's not that at all. It's I'm opening a space for your soul to utilize me, us, as a tuning fork for your humanity to receive whatever it needs to come into greater levels of congruency mm -hmm. so that you can actually experience that and develop a very solid, strong reference point within your system, an embodied reference point of what it feels like to come into true contact with your wholeness. It's undeniable when you're in that space. It's not, am I there? It's not, it's not a mental activity. It's an actual embodied experience of deep relief and homecoming. And there's, it's just, there's no words that can adequately do justice to that experience and what that opens for us. Because from that experience, we've tapped into your wholeness, the whole world opens up and you can suddenly see with greater clarity and lucidity, all the aspects of your life that need to be adjusted. What are the new decisions that need to be made, the new choices to then bring all the different aspects of your life into alignment with your wholeness so that everything that you're engaged with can become a truly congruent expression of who you fundamentally are. And mm -hmm. when we are in that space, then everything that we're doing, that it flows forth from our being, we become far more functional and effective in the world because we're not actually being, um, we're not experiencing the distortion and that the impedance and drag of all of that, the weight of all the patterns that keep pulling us back. So mm. even though we're trying to move forward in life, it's like there's all this weight that pulls us back. So when that energy mm. gets, we suddenly have this flood of energy that's available for us to channel into our life in a very generative way. What do you want to focus all of this on becomes the question. And whatever you focus on, it begins to bloom with life because it's, it's the energy of life itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, girl. And I love that you brought up the, the, this isn't a game of strive, 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 mm -hmm. because that is kind of the self-empowerment game. It's constant, like someday, 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 outside of me, outside of me, outside of me. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? Instead of, this is why medicine has been such a big piece, but I also have been very, like, I'm very aware of it only being for the people ready for it and why. Yeah. because what's going to happen is, um, you know, I I've seen lots of people will just hear about, you know, Aya or all sorts of medicine work and want to go down and, 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 and participate in medicine. And what you know is there's this huge clearing, right? There's this huge clearing, this huge opening to receive. And then when you go back to your everyday life and you don't know how to be in a different vibration and to, like you said, step into becoming that, then people recreate the same shit. And then they're still striving for the next thing. And so medicine gives us the, this is why for, for me, I've always been very like, we only allowed certain people to actually go do medicine with us. It's if they were, they were in a place where they were in my programs, they, they knew how to process, they knew how to move through stuff. And knowing that it's not a, you're going to go and you're going to keep going. Now in my journey, you and I both know how to tap in. It's like when I got called to do medicine with you, I hadn't done it for over a year. There'd been a long, my, my body just was like, nope. It's like, and 
the things, each time the things that I access allow me to access them without medicine. Like now I literally at nighttime, I can go out and I can look up at the stars and I can see the, the whole energetic grid. I can see the, the grid. I can see light language. I can see stars communicating. I can see a whole bunch of stuff going on that I never could see before. And I don't have to be on medicine. So I want to be very clear with that. I love that you brought that up, that it's like our intention here is to be like, hey guys, medicine's the greatest thing in the world. Come do it with us. And then you're going to keep doing it. The whole, the whole desire and intent is, as you put so eloquently, my love, is returning to the wholeness of yourself, bringing those fractals back to you. And the way that you operate as a whole being in your vibration and your frequency is that you can only see the beauty that is now available. You can interact with the beauty that's now available. You in this beautiful, you discover your natural state of being. And I love how you share because you're, you're like the most beautiful embodiment of the natural state. Like how you, and this is the other thing, guys, being around someone with the codes, being around the essence, I, I continue to do when people are just get interaction with me. Even as I dropped into Maui and I have this guest house and I'm interacting with people, they're like, just being around you shifted everything for me because the way that we operate is in the natural state of bliss and flow and ease and allowance and surrender. And like, we have this belief that the the universe just wants to love on us and it's like all so juicy and sensual and all of a sudden you open and activate that and everything in your world like you said becomes congruent and aligned to it when you access it so there is there is some fine points here that i want to make sure people really are hearing this isn't about telling you to run off and do medicine we are and we're, we're it's, it's very sacred i mean you know amber every time i even do hoppe or a ceremony at all it's like very sacred get in tune with the medicine get in tune with all of that because it is it is such a sacred thing and this is the thing guys amber in all of her work has such a gift uh you know of tuning into that and so it's like the medicine that we use the the the, the everything's already been uh like tuned into coming from this place it's not just like a that's why I'm like, this is so incredibly sacred and valuable and amazing. We felt so called to offer. And I don't know that we'll ever do this again. It's just, we were like, cool, we get to, we get to create this space where it's like the, the right medicine at the right time in that field, in that safety, allowing us to do this and know that if you feel called to and ready for that, then we still want to make sure we're still doing the team's doing the back end to be like, Hey, is this really a fit for you? Does this align? So that we, cause that's our absolute, you know, that's, that's what we're aligned to integrity wise. So, um, this isn't just a, a, an offering that anybody can jump into, but we want to at least also spread the message for people to understand how easy it really can be, right? Like how easy we can get back to that bliss state of living, or I call it super consciousness and bliss state consciousness. It's like living in that place. And I got to say my as much as I've done, my, my ability in that even up-leveled so much. Mm -hmm. I opened and expanded that so much from being around you. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm always talking about Juicy Amber. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like how much she activated my even more of those codes. And so there's so much more to just that there's, I, I would never just say just the medicine. The medicine is beautiful, but all of it is like alchemy. You mm -hmm. are an alchemist. So it's like the temple the sacred grounds and space. Like you said, the fact that someone can feel that energy, just like when I walked in, I was like, whoa, there's this energy of like pure, just softness. And like, it's like being held in the womb and just being safe to let all things be explored and expressed and created. And even the way that we have a design that if anyone's like being, you know, that there is ability for safe one-on-one -on -one space to be able to go through this. Like, it's like completely safe and sacred. Not to mention your abilities, which I couldn't even try to describe, but Amber has, I mean, it's like when my experience in medicine with her and in ceremony was I would, because I know that I continue to breathe open to it, I would feel certain spaces and I was like working on these spaces and I literally would like ask her for support or assistance and she would be able to do, you could, you could, I'm sure you got language for it. She did her gifts and her goods that were just like allowing this removal and this, this like so much more happened than just medicine because I was supported by Amber's gifts um, mm -hmm. and the space 
And, and then us, our time, like, um, you know, as we do breakdown a breakthrough or integration time with people, it's like, this is where we get actually the reflections and the codes of our essence and how to operate as that stuff is moving through. And it's like imprinting in our system and settling in that literally then everyone like leaves just as I did being like, ah, like I'm a way more expanded individual into love and light. I'm so much more in a capacity to receive so much more pleasure and love and joy and and be congruent with that because of all of those aspects so it is really like a return to wholeness because we believe in bringing all the aspects together to bring it together and so much of that is that divine space and your gifts as well and what you offer thank you love mm -hmm. it's not finding the aspect and all that Hey, Amber Love, I'm losing you. Can you hear me? I'm okay. Um, I see you fine. Yep. I just I hear most of what you just said, but I don't know if Steve is still on to be able to tell us, but. Okay. I, maybe I and I don't know if you can see Facebook because I can't see Facebook. I can't. I can only. <laughs> <laughs> We're both on Zoom, having it be run, but I just want to make sure we can hear you. Okay. Maybe just okay if you can. You know, a little bit, bit yeah. Because okay. I can hear you before I miss some of that. So just speaking into there's the you know a layer a top of. Yeah, there's a scratchiness when I start speaking. I don't know what's happening with that or what to do about that, but. Um, yeah, just well, at least I can hear you now. Even, you know what, guys, even if you're like, what? Like, just Listen the stuff that comes out of your mouth, right? Yeah, just the stuff that comes out of your mouth is so good that, you know, it's, it's whatever we get from you is perfect. I'll do my best to be concise. So, um, so okay. as we see, Kiva just joined. Hey, Kiva, we were kind of, we we're kind of losing Amber just a little bit, but I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to fuddle on the back of here and get success. <laughs> Okay, well, go for it. Amber's, Amber's just too vibrationally high for the Zoom. The tech is, the tech is like, oh my gosh, this vibration is so good. How do I, how do I receive all back this? Back a little bit. Like, <laughs> the technology, okay, technology, we got this. Right, we love you, yes. Okay, so, ahead. yeah, so the layer, I was speaking to the layer. Um, I, I can't hear her anymore. Okay, so maybe yeah. it's just, well, hopefully it's just on my head. I can, I can handle it. It's not on other people. Yeah. Amber, yeah, what would happen if you uh, tried to just, you know? She said if you could quiet, maybe turn down your video. It's like yeah. you're... I hear you, but then it's covered up. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. How is that? Is that any better? Uh, I think we're good now. Kiva, is that better? I'm, I'm waiting. What if you turn the video off? We'd have to lose Amber sexiness. Okay. I know. Okay, is that better? I'm wondering if we want to log off and try again. The, the sound is so grating. Yeah, it's like I'm getting half of what you're saying, Amber. It's like, oh, I that's barely, not good. It, it covers up. Yeah. So, well, um, we can give us your suggestion, Key, because I can also try to just jump back on, on that page. But um, I know when we get on there and just add her through that, we could try that. But yeah, you want to show that? You've got, not on like, Zoom, but directly from Facebook? Yeah, let's try it. Okay. Okay, great. So you gotta be off. So we'll 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 try to to jump on there. What I'll do, Amber, is I'll jump on again and then I think I can do the whole invite you and, okay. and try that and then you just accept it. Okay, so great. <laughs> I'll go on Facebook and I'll wait for you to invite me. <laughs> All right. See everybody soon. <laughs> Bye everybody. Okay, Keeve, I hope I know how to do this.
All right, I'm gonna meet you on Facebook. Okay. Oh wait. Back. Do you know what I'm what I mean? Like where you you do a recording and then you um I well I think we want I think we're still live. I think we want to stop this one and go to the other one, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye everybody.